Out here in the shop, I'm terrible at remembering to charge my batteries. When I collect all the batteries from around the shop, this is usually what it ends up looking like. A pile of dead batteries with only one on the charger. And to make matters worse, these little two amp hour batteries take like an hour to charge. So this one little stack of batteries is gonna take like eight hours. At first I considered something to remind me, kind of like I did in a previous video with my washer and dryer, but I thought it'd be a lot more fun to try to make a robot to just swap it out for me and then I don't have to do anything. Here's what the model ended up after a few CAD days. There's a hopper that holds a stack of batteries until a sled pushes them into the charger. And since the batteries can vary in height due to their capacity, I have to make the charging system raise and lower. And this limit switch here is what handles all that measuring. Let's get this thing built. Not entirely sure how I got this far off, but the belt is just not enough. You can see it's pulled very tight right there. Since the belt didn't fit, I jumped back into CAD and redesigned that whole plate. While I was at it, I made it a little thinner and a little sleeker so it didn't take six hours to print. All right, with the basic assembly all done, it's time to start on the firmware. Now my C++ game is not very strong, so I ended up writing very small portions and then slowly adding chunks as it went along. And that worked out really well. If I tried to write the whole thing in one go, it'd have been a nightmare. Just don't do it. I realized that I couldn't really capture the battery with the sled. And I had just kind of estimated in the CAD model to figure out where the hopper needed to be. So I had to use some trial and error, some scrap wood to figure out how much I needed to add. Jump back into CAD, redesign it, export it, cut it out on the CNC, and then assemble that all together. Well, with the new hopper mounted, I spent about the next week just slowly making small changes in the firmware to get it really dialed in. It was pretty finicky, but we made it work. Up until this point, I hadn't really connected the Arduino to the charging circuit. I had just stubbed out a delay method in the Arduino firmware for about five seconds to simulate charging. And that let me develop faster because I didn't have to wait an hour for it to charge a battery every single time I made a change to the firmware. But I hadn't tested the two together. This turned out to be a problem because when I actually tried to tie the two together, it did not work the way I assumed it would. And I ended up spending a day or two just fiddling with the wires, trying different ways. And I was getting these really weird, unexpected results. Five volts when I thought it was supposed to be grounded and grounded when it's supposed to be five volts. It was a mess. LED is way brighter than it normally is. Until finally I decided to just bust out the breadboard and slap an opto isolator on there to keep them completely separate but they can still kind of talk to each other. If you've never used an opto isolator they're really cool if you need to keep two things separate uh, especially if you have two systems that, ha that run on different voltages. The first time I ever used them was a couple years ago when <laughs> I hooked an Arduino to 5 volt to an Xbox controller that was 3 volt and I used a Python script to level up a Destiny character while I was working. 
Internally, they have an LED and a light sensor. And when the LED lights up, it's essentially flipping a switch. So on the Arduino, it's just a button press. So all we really need to do is splice into the charging circuit board to tap into that LED signal and then we can detect it on the Arduino side when that LED is supposed to be blinking. And from there we can tell if the battery is charging or if it's finished. So I spliced in that opto isolator circuit, plugged in a battery, and the Arduino was able to detect it. We're good to go. So after a few weeks of tweaking the firmware, it cycles the batteries reliably, it loads them in the hopper, the Arduino is picking up when the charger. It's time to do a full system test with like five or six batteries. Before that, I need to make a few mounts though because right now it's just sitting on my workbench and I need to mount it to a wall. All right, full system test. So I came back after an hour and discovered that it wasn't really charging. That first LED was still blinking, indicating that it was still at like the 25% range. And it should have been pretty much charged. It had been sitting there for an hour charging. I thought maybe there was an off chance that these two terminals in the center were some kind of communication lanes and maybe it wasn't charging, but that didn't seem to be the case either. I tried switching back to the original power supply, but that didn't make a difference either. I even unhooked the Arduino harness to make sure that that wasn't doing anything weird, but that wasn't it. The only thing left was the charger and it worked before I hooked it to this robot. So obviously I did something wrong. I don't know what I did. Luckily though, I have a spare charger, so I'm gonna take it apart, compare the PCBs, plug them both in, hook them up to batteries, and just start probing around until I figure out what the difference is. Did you catch that? Here, look at it again. The board from the robot is not charging the battery at all. It's actually depleting the battery more. It's an anti-charger. I bet I fried something when I was messing around with that Arduino before I started using the opto isolator. The LED is way brighter than it normally is. I probably sent five volts the wrong way and I'm sure that PCB developer never thought that someone would be sending five volts the wrong way there's no diode right there so it's my fault i'm sure so at this point i've got a decision to make i could go the easy route and not modify the new circuit board at all and just keep them separate and i could add like a delay for an hour or something in the firmware and just just kind of estimate that the battery is charged and then inject it or i could risk my last battery charger solder in my opto isolator that way the arduino knows exactly when it's finished charging to eject it that's right you didn't come to this channel for the easy route i'm with you I swapped out the circuit board, I had to do a quick little firmware update because there's like a slight difference in the boards. Yeah, 
It's finally time to see if this thing works. Tune in next time to watch me completely over-engineer something just so I can stay lazy.